How can I treat dark spots in sun-damaged skin without prolonged downtime? Sun-damaged skin with resulting freckles and dark spots can appear at any age. This includes situations such as younger people who have experienced a lot of sun exposure or indoor tanning, as well as older people with accumulated sun damage which becomes more visible in later years. In the past, treating sun-damaged skin involved aggressive treatments accompanied by long downtime. Modern technologies allow me to help my patients get comparable results but without the prolonged healing process. I'm Dr. Amiya Prasad. I'm a board-certified cosmetic surgeon and fellowship-trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I've been in practice in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years. I have been treating sun-damaged skin since I started my practice. I started first using deep chemical peels and fully ablative CO2 lasers. As medical technology evolved, I adapted the use of less aggressive fractional lasers such as CO2 and erbium lasers. In addition, I routinely use non-ablative lasers which leave the top layers of skin intact resulting in typically no downtime. I also synergistically use regenerative medicine technology like PRP or platelet-rich plasma to further improve the skin at the same time. Types of sun-damaged skin ranges from different concentrations of melanin and pigment. Light to dark discolorations that manifest as smaller spots are commonly described as freckles or solar dyschromias. Larger, more defined spots are commonly described as dark or brown spots, which are solar lentigos. These freckles and brown spots occur between the top and bottom layer of the skin, called the dermal-epidermal junction. To treat dark spots and freckles in the past involved removing or ablating the top layers of skin. This was first done with chemical peels, also known as TCA peels, which stand for trichloroacetic acid, which required significant recovery for the top layer of skin to regenerate. Chemical peels also tended to treat unaffected areas of the face, so treatment wasn't localized to the small areas. This meant that more surface area of the face was involved in the healing process. While TCA peels are effective, they did require patients to take time off work while their facial skin was still peeling for several days after treatment. Skin treatment evolved into the first fully ablative CO2 lasers in the mid-1990s. CO2 lasers also removed the top layers of skin and required significant downtime. The lasers were effective but patients were exposed to a lot of heat energy and doctors and practitioners had to manage the effects of high levels of heat on the skin. Fully ablative CO2 lasers also involved removal of the top layers of skin with heating of lower layers of skin, the dermis. A lot of healing time was needed. Patients could be out for weeks while waiting for skin layers to come back and cover up the skin which was intensely red. The laser technology I use in my practice to treat solar dyschromias and lentigos do not need prolonged downtime. I discuss during consultation what the specific aspects of the skin my patients want to see improve. I also discuss the amount of recovery needed for the issues they are concerned about. For example, if you want to address fine lines, an option we can use are fractional lasers. There is a dual benefit to fractional lasers. One is the removal of irregular top layers of skin, which is the epidermis, and the other is energy delivery for collagen remodeling in the lower layers of the skin the dermis. Unlike fully ablative laser treatment, fractional lasers allow surface areas to be left intact, which results in faster healing. 
If the main concern is about dark spots and freckles, I usually use a Q-switch laser. The laser can go through the top layers of skin, leaving it intact while breaking up the pigment caused by sun damage. The approach to the treatment is typically to have patients come in monthly, so the pigmentation progressively decreases without any disruption in the patient's schedule. I explain to my patients that the pigmentation caused by the sun is comparable to a tattoo, even though a tattoo is placed in the deeper part of the skin. The laser energy is absorbed by the pigment and broken up into smaller particles which are metabolized by the body. Like all laser treatments, skin type and skin color are very important factors in the type of laser used and the energy settings applied. Generally speaking, lighter skin can take higher energy settings while darker skin needs lower energy settings. As I stated earlier, I routinely employ the use of regenerative medicine technology such as platelet-rich plasma and hyaluronic acid to help the skin quality. It's actually a routine for us to perform Q-switch laser treatment, which we refer to as laser toning, with PRP and hyaluronic acid delivered to the dermis called skin boosting. In fact, PRP has been documented in the medical literature to be beneficial in treating hyperpigmentation, which makes further this combination an effective strategy. Treating pigmentation and other skin issues caused by sun damage no longer requires the long downtime of chemical peels and aggressive lasers. As mentioned earlier, since the top layer of skin is intact with the Q-switch laser, healing time is minimal to none even when combined with skin boosting. This means your skin quality and areas of pigmentation can be treated conveniently without interruption in your daily routine. I recommend using other products such as sunblock to protect the skin from sun exposure which can cause more brown discolorations to appear. I hope you found this information helpful. Thank you for your question.